in depth with you and explain to you exactly what we're doing. We've got a brand new brush pile marked right here. Oh, and see if you can pant just real slow, pan around there and show everybody where that uh, marker buoy is right there. Okay, now turn, come back around this way to me. Owen's learning how to run the video camera, everybody, so you gotta kinda bear with him. Now, before I hit any of these places, I'm gonna get a bottle of lure flavor. Now, there's a lot of people that, that can't really grasp the fact that a bubblegum flavored product might actually entice crappie to bite, but you won't believe it until you try it. I think it's got something to do with the sweet smell, it's got something to do with the really strong flavor. Uh, Bubblegum lure flavor uh, is made to not wash off soft plastics, and it doesn't really take that much. We just kind of spray it on like that. It kind of drips off a little bit. I kind of like to let it set, and uh, if you're around here uh, in the water, you can see the oil when the oil hits the water. And Now what we're, what we're doing is I'm in 30 foot of water right here, and I've got my brush pile mar marked with a marker buoy. Just, just keep it on me, Oe, till I tell you to move it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pitch the go-go minnow out over the brush. We saw the fish on top of the brush pile and fish down the, down the edges, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to pitch a two-inch go-go minnow up there with the weedless head, and we're going to let it just kind of fall slow down and see if we can get hit. Now, a lot of times you won't even feel the hit. You'll just see your line stop on top of these brush piles, especially the first time, few times you hit them. Let me swing around here and see if we can get one. Okay. Okay. You on me now? Mm -hmm. Now put your hand back up there so you can hold it still, though. Okay, now move the trolling motor around. You want to you want to make sure not to get your trolling motor up there on top of that brush pile. You don't even want the wash pushing up against that brush pile. You want to keep that kind of as pristine as possible. So we're going to throw the gogo minnow out and I'm just going to let it sink. Just let it fall down around that brush. And I don't know exactly where it is. I know it's around that marker buoy somewhere. And I know the top of it was in about 10 foot deep, 10 foot of water. So I'm going to reel it real slow and around here until I find that brush pile. I know it's right there around that marker somewhere. Sometimes the hardest part about catching these crappie is actually finding the brush that you threw your marker buoy out on. Okay, I missed it that time. I'm going to move out over this way just a little bit. And I like to use a high-vis. This is a chartreuse line. We use a lot of high-vis line or chartreuse or white line. There was a hit right there. My line just stopped. I'm going to reel it in real slow. So I think I got a pretty good idea of where the brush pile is now. I've just had two hits. There was another one. More than likely small crappie. Now, you can reel this slow and the go-go minnow's tail is still turning. Let's try it again. Now I'm pretty sure I know right where the brush pile, there was a hit right there. Okay. I think what happened, now this is a good time to talk about this because a lot of people say, well, the perch bite the go-go minnow tails off. Well, they do bite the go-go minnow tails off, but the thing about the go-go minnow is right here, this pinch point is really, really small, and that's what makes that tail turn all the time. That's what keeps it turn. Keep it turning. There was a bluegill or something on the top of that pile, and it bit my tail off. I'm going to grab Owen's rod right here. He's got uh, the two inch firecracker on here. I'm going to grab his rod while we're doing this video. We're going to try to show you this in real time, just exactly how we would do this if we weren't, weren't out here videoing. All right, let's see what happens now.
there's a perch, bluegill or something hitting it. I didn't hit any brush that last two casts. I'm gonna have to move out this way just a little bit. You just gotta keep hitting them. Keep hitting that spot where you think your crappie are until you bump into that brush. If you're not bumping it every now and then, you're probably not gonna catch the crappie. Right there. Okay, now it took me a little bit to get that crappie. Now, I don't think, whoops, I don't think that, was, that wasn't a keeper, but let's see if we can get in there and get another one. I think I got them located now, a little bit better. Bugs are about to eat me up out here. top of that pile. Not a keeper, but you keep after him. You keep keep pitching on top of it till you find your brush. That's the key. We'll see if we can get another one. Because the, the next one might be a keeper. You know, not, not every brush pile every day is going to always have keeper crappie, 10, 12 inch fish in it. But you got to keep fishing them until you catch your active crappie out of the brush and then, oop, there was a hit right there. See, I've located the brush pile now. Not a, well, I don't think it's a keeper. Nope, about the same size as the last one. And, and this water's warm. It's starting to warm up. It's in the mid 70s. That's uh, uh, right, right around the first of June. And we switch everything over to usually to two inch go-go's on these big main lake brush piles, usually um, by the first of June, we're always fishing with a two inch go-go with an, an eighth inch head. We like to use big baits and, and try to create a big shad profile in the water. Now that's perch hitting me. And I didn't jerk because I didn't want to tear off my tail. There is just a, a huge school of bluegill right there on top of that brush pile and they're trying to chew my poor old go go minnow completely up. There he is. Whoop! Come off. Okay, he pulled my go-go minnow down. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Williams with Flea Fly. Just persistence pays off out here on these brush, pi brush piles. The one thing I can tell you is after you found your brush and you're reeling a go-go minnow through it in the summertime, if you're reeling this through it and that tail is turning and you don't get a hit and you've bumped that brush two or three times, you need to go to a new location because there's no active crappie there. 
Don't make crappie fishing harder than it has to be. Keep after them. Persistence. Throw your marker buoy out. Find your brush. And once you do, use the right lure that's got a lot of action in the summertime. And I promise you, if there's a crappie in there, he will hit it. I'm Jeff Williams. Thanks for watching our video. <laughs>